Hi everybody, this is Steve at Thousand Year Home. Welcome aboard. So if this is your first time dropping in, I am building a uh, uh, a rather large Connex uh, off-grid. It's it's two Connexes with a 20-foot uh, cathedral ceiling between the two with a stairwell to a patio. It'll be about 1,400 square foot. So I'm building it with my own money, not with the bank's money, and my own two hands. Nobody else is helping me. So this is going to be maybe my last retirement home. Uh, which I've bought a couple, I've uh, sold a couple, I've built a couple, so uh, not that many, but at least three. So hopefully this is the last one. So uh, this is the second part of a uh, wiring the back office here. So this is the back third. So I took one Connex, one shipping container, and I converted it to a really large ensuite. So the back third of it is an office area. The middle part is a uh, large Jack and Jill bathroom. And then the front uh, will be a master bedroom with uh, French doors that open out. And all of this will be in Santa Fe Mission style. But the first part of my electrical was nothing but disappointment. And uh, one, I'm fighting the heat, and now it's, it's 74. It's pretty late in the evening, so I'm working evening hours. But um, I had a shipment come from Lowe's, and uh, while the shippers here, they have you inspect it. And it was a rather large shipment. It had uh, my mini split. It had all my conduit. It had uh, rolls and spools. And, you know, it was a couple few thousand dollars worth of items to go through. And I did go through. Uh, in fact, uh, Leah, my friend, was here. And we went through item by item by item. And we made sure that what was on the shipping list was physically there. But we didn't pay enough attention. So one thing that I did here is I simply looked at the spools that came in. And I said, oh, yeah, that's 12 gauge. And, uh, you know, it's red uh, or it's white, black, green. Perfect. And then I had the red tracing wire, uh, runner wire. So I said, oh, I'm all set there. Uh, ordered a couple other colors. They didn't come in, but okay, fine. I didn't pay for them either. Well, it turns out some of them are stranded. Some of them are solid. They're all supposed to be solid. <laughs> well, that was a, everything. I had also ordered Wagos. And uh, what I got, I had ordered the Wagos with the uh, levers that I could release. And what I had gotten here instead is the stab connectors. Well, those are extremely difficult to stab with uh, stranded especially, right? And um, they're not what I wanted. And um, But, you know, when I was going through the inventory, I said, oh, yeah, look, there they are, you know. And I checked them off the box. So when I went back to the uh, to Lowe's today, and it, I am off-grid, and it's not like I'm at the end of the earth, but I am off-grid. And I, I got with the electrical guy. It was a Sunday, slow. And I said, I want Wago connectors. He said, I don't know what those are. So that goes back to we're just hiring people as clerks. Right, somebody who is, and when I was a kid, there you had a, um, a craftsman running the hard a lumber yard, right? Somebody who understood everything, maybe had built some houses himself, maybe was building houses while uh, owning a lumber yard, but that's all gone. And so I yeah, end up with, uh, with clerks. Um, the gentleman that I spoke with, this was his second job. His first job was, uh, um, at a McDonald's or something, right? A manager of McDonald's, something totally not related uh, to Lowe's. And I've uh, been props to Lowe's, at least they got me my order. Home Depot never even delivered, right? They ran me around and never delivered. So, but here I am uh, after dark, uh, and I had to walk the aisles of Lowe's myself to get exactly what I want. And I tell you, I, I think I've got a 25 foot trailer, I see no value, none, zero. And having these uh, big box stores box up an order. You have to go and you have to get it yourself. And ain't that a thing, right? Ain't that a thing. So anyway, I did go to uh, Lowe's and I walked the aisle. I got the kind of Wagos that I wanted. Uh, and uh, I didn't buy the uh, any more wire. I, what I have is what I have. I can mix stranded and solid together. It's not ideal, but it's not a code violation or anything. I just have to be more careful, <laughs> more careful than I want to be. I just want to knock these things out, right? 
Uh, some guys actually tin the, uh, but you, you can put a stranded, you can twist a stranded onto a solid, you can wiggle in a stranded. It, it's all okay. It's all okay. Uh, and besides, I'm, I'm using uh, 12 gauge wire through most of the uh, uh, Connex, even on 15 amp circuits. So I'm just not doing a lot of jumping around with big, fat, big, little, fat, 14 gauge, stranded, 12 gauge, solid, la, 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 la. It's all 12 gauge mostly, right? And then the, the last hop to the light, you know, the last six inches might be, uh, um, you know, 14 gauge from the manufacturer if there's some transformer or something. So uh, anyway, I'm working late and the mosquitoes are already hanging out with me. But uh, let me see if I could do part two of this uh, electrical build. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm starting off as far away from the uh, insulation as possible. Way back there, you can see there's insulation. There's some lights dangling there. I don't want to mess with those. So I'm going to start here. And now that I have all the parts that are correct, <laughs> I'm going to actually install the lights formally, um, waiting for drywall. And then I'll go and I'll insulate them. Now these are uh, insulation contact grade receptacles and they come with a little can light. So that's what I'm going to work on. And uh, apologies if the video is a little shadowy, a little, you know, it is what it is. This is what you might have to do if you build your own house all by yourself too, right? All right, I'm going to use the, um, the ceiling fan junction box, the support box for the junction box for the can lights. So as well as the... Um, ceiling fan light and the ceiling fans uh, itself. So uh, I've got all of these marked. There's the double one, there's the single one, and there's the red one with no line, and there's my universal neutral. So let's go ahead and get this on. Now this particular can light, I'll show you, had a uh, had a knockout for the Romex, and uh, it, the Romex knockouts uh, crimps are one thing I'm missing. So I have two styles of can lights here. This style, which needs a uh, a knockout added to it and a crimp for Romex, and this box came with one. See, and so I'm using this box today because it's what I have. But I do have a different kind of ceiling fan light as well. But this is what I'm using today. So one, row, one run of Romex will go over to the can lights above my desk, which are also over by the window. And another set of Romex will go over here above the entry door and above the door to the bathroom. So, you know, there'll be plenty of little lights in here. If you walk in, you can flip a light and you'll have light. Uh, and really it'll probably, probably over light. But the interesting thing about these can lights is you can toggle them down from, uh, you know, a soft white or, you know, a, a warm, I guess I could, should say a, a warm, uh, uh, glow to a, a hard white. So, uh, and it's hard to see, but right here, there's a little switch and the little switch says, uh, 5,000K, 4,000K, 3,000K. So 3,000K would be your warm, soft lighting. 5,000K would be for your off office productivity. So above the office, I'll go ahead and put in 5,000K. And above the doors, I'll put three. So you can use either one. So, all right, let me get this. Let me get the Romex cut and pulled for these. Now by each light box, I'll leave just a little bit. So, and once I drill the hole, I can, I can move it around. I can find a light box. I could make a small change, but since this is only an eight by 40, right? And I don't, I don't need to leave 10 feet up there. I leave, need to leave six, eight, maybe a foot, uh, six, eight inches, maybe a foot. So. So that'll be my run to the first light there. And then they, uh, that light will run to the next light. So 
what I'm missing and what didn't come with it is the uh, um, crimps for here to crimp down the, uh, or rubber grommets to crimp down the Romex. So I'm going to have to order those in. Tomorrow project, but at least I'll get it all run today and I'll get them tested and uh, we can move forward from there. Alright, so uh, I did have to mess around a little bit in that insulation to get those lights. I was just hoping I could slip it in. I couldn't. Also, I'm going to be pouring a concrete roof over these rafter ties, so I want to make sure that the Romex doesn't ever get pinched. So there's corrugations where I could run the Romex, and I'm doing that, and then I staple tie it uh, according to specs uh, so it won't move. Uh, and then I'm leaving a little bit of slack at the very end so I can move the uh, electric box around just ever so slightly. I know that I'm close enough. When I drill it, I want to be able to reach up, find it, and plug in the light and be done with it. I don't want a big, big deal over it, you know. So I bought a Tyvek suit so that I could um, do that insulation. Just a couple of seconds, uh, less than a minute probably under each one of those bats. And I was already scratching <laughs> So, uh, man, I t the insulation is tough to do. But uh, let me get this other portion of this light in, and then the entire office I can put on my Tyvek suit and get all the insulation in this the afternoon or evening if it's at, once it's cold, cooler. And uh, then this whole thing will be ready for drywall. I'm going to make a list of the little odds and ends of things. Like, I've looked for the Romex crimps inside of a conduit EMT box. I, I haven't found them yet, so a little aggravated about that. All right, break time, I guess. I'm going to shower up, <laughs> take the long drive into the big city, and uh, get the little bit of supplies I need left to do this wiring right. And uh, the box of Wagos, the grommet crimps for the half-inch conduit to Romex. And uh, I have the wire straps, so hopefully I get all the supplies I need that this evening I can go ahead and um, install the insulation on this half third rather this third of the conex which means uh, then I can drywall it and get it prepped and uh, then when I get that done I'll have a temporary wall and I'll, I'll continue to do everything and maybe I can even have the bed in here and, and the AC on and all those good things since it is 90 100 degrees plus uh, first second day of summer uh, it's hot all right, pretty happy with today's work. Uh, a little disappointed. Supplies are very difficult to get still. And um, and I, it, I start early. Uh, so, and then, uh, and then things come in wrong. Uh, you know, the, um, I didn't pay, well, I, I saw the spools come in. They had the right gauge. They were the right color. The first one I checked was stranded. I assume they are all or solid. I assume they're all solid like I wanted. And, you know, the... Uh, green ended up being stranded. I didn't want that. The white's stranded. The black's the only one that's solid, and I wanted them all solid. And um, and then uh, the uh, 14 gauge is just as bad as the 12 gauge, all mixed. 
and a little bit of a bummer, but since I've over-engineered it anyway, and these are very low wattage, uh, you know, solar uh, LED lights, I'm, I've got no concern. <laughs> But uh, it's it's just not the way I wanted to do it. But I've got to accept things and be flexible. And so will you if you're an independent builder. And I am not building this as uh, you know uh, uh, as a contractor. Uh, this would be unacceptable uh, as a as a contractor. But it's okay. And uh, and even when you hit the boxes, they're they're 12 gauge or they're 14 gauge stranded anyway. So oh, and I need wire nuts. So that uh, those are what I need. So uh, way goes wire nuts and then the uh, oh uh, Romex crimps. I better write it down. <laughs> All right, like, subscribe, follow me along. This is Steve at Thousand Year Hopes. Bye. All right, so this can light is uh, insulation contact capable, so I have mineral wool that will come up here. I'm going to pour a concrete roof on top of this. So these rafter tie-ins, I can't have something in between that will get pinched and cut from the weight of the concrete. But in between each one of these, if you'll notice, I can run my fingers in there and wiggle it around because there's corrugation on the top of the roof. So I'm being careful to run the wires in there. I'll go ahead and, and uh, you know, staple it in. And then I'm leaving a little slack so that I can move the can light around where I want to put the thing. So I want, this is going to be a door right here and I want a little can light when you first walk in uh, to uh, illuminate this spot. I'll, I'll have another little can light over here where there's another door. So uh, that what I'm doing is I'm doing the last run to this last can light that I need and uh, from there uh, it'll be a pretty easy matter of, of just walking everything back and wiring everything up the way that I want it. And this, this, there's these, uh, you can't notice it, but these Romex are, uh, are two different widths because one, they sent me with the, uh, <laughs> and I didn't ask for it. They sent me with the, uh, uh, the, uh, tra trace wire on it, uh, the trailer. So I could do, uh, you know, um, three way switches and things like that. I didn't order that. <laughs> That's what they sent. And indeed, when I went and I bought this this pretty particular piece of Romex, the guy grabbed the wrong one. He grabbed the hundred footer off the shelf uh, that was just sitting in the bay. So uh, it's you know not everything it's all cracked up to be. So right, where do I want this door at? Right here will be the door. So. But it's really something for me to to say. And this one guy, you know, the guy I was talking with wasn't a kid or anything. He was somebody who retired. I wish I could remember what job he said he retired from. And, uh, you know, then he was back at Lowe's. And, uh, but the two jobs were completely different, you know. The, the one wasn't in construction at all. Anyway, he, he appreciated me taking the time to educate him. But I would rather not have to educate people on uh, on their job <laughs> I, I would rather that uh, they just knew their job all right Now these, those lights came with these. Let's see if I can make it focus. Well, I can, but you can't see it. Uh, I'll see if I could focus on my chest. These are just push-ins. Wow. 
Oh, it's going to be terrible lighting. Terrible lighting. I might just abandon even trying to film in the dark here. We'll see how these look. I mean, I'll move you around, but I, I don't have much faith. Man, it's still pretty darn up. Pretty darn up. All right, well, that will let me move that around. So I'll put a nail in there, right there, and hold that in. I don't know if that's going to focus or not. So these are pushing connectors. They're probably just a cheap Chinese knockoff. They're not German or Wagos or anything like that. Let's see. I cannot look. It's not going to not going to focus. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. Did you get it? Did you get it? There you go. See, and then I could push two pins in and, uh, you know, through the plastic part, the clear plastic part. You could see the, uh, you know, the connector. It's not as dark uh, here as what it's showing up in the camera, but it is what it is. And I just need to get this house built, and uh, the temperature, you know, is uh, not working for me. I've, I've got to keep moving. I completed that one. It's all hooked up. Everything's anchored in. That one's hooked up. I get uh, all done. I'm going to uh, hook up the jackery today and test out at least the uh, the lights in here. All right. So let me work on the uh, that's uh, junction box and also the ceiling fan. So we'll work on that.
Alright, I have all the wiring in test mode, uh, so um, let's go ahead and test these lights. I went ahead and, uh, you know, put a couple of, of lights on here. I'll pull those down when I uh, actually put up the drywall so they don't get hurt. But I've got lights all up, all wired. Let's give it a test. All right, very good. So that, that's gonna be, uh, and here these are turned up a little brighter. Everything's on. I've already left them on for a couple hours, so let's, uh, let's see how we feel about that. I don't like the, I'm gonna rotate the, the positives from switch to switch, or I'll put the switches in the other side. I don't like the fact that that one's controlling the uh, wrong wrong light. All right. Lights are on, electric wiring's in. So listen, now I could come back in here and finish up the insulation. There's, there's a part of every construction where things look like an ugly duckling. And as soon as that insulation hits the ground, it looks like a flood disaster area. Is this not a disaster area? This is actually progress. I've got the lights up in the ceiling I, and I can go ahead and finish the insulation and the drywall in this portion. And then ultimately I can pull the, uh, the uh, wires through the conduit. There's a couple of ones that I still want to, I want to run a screw in there and a black backer. Five eighths inch is where I want it. That one's sticking out a little too far. Those are solid in there. I think I've already put screws in there. Those are solid, so this portion's all set and ready. All righty, everybody. This is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. Thank you for joining my little build. And uh, this wiring wasn't so easy to do because uh, those can lights, that I was wise to, uh, wise to test them out. Let me rotate. Two of them had, or, had ground fault right off the reel, and I wasn't hard on them. I didn't bang them around. So this is something that I bought at Habitat, and you'll notice it, it shipped from somebody else, and uh, the labels came in cut off of it. So I suspected that these were returns, and so I wanted to make sure that I didn't get burned by hanging drywall and uh, cutting the lights out and then finding out they uh, were defective. So I went ahead and tested them all, and uh, I found two out of the 12 that were um, a D a DOA right from uh, right from the manufacturer or whoever bought these originally. So uh, not real. I'm not real happy with these lights. I'm you know trying to build a thousand year house and I get these flimsy uh, LED containers and while they're terrible light, you know, and and uh, that works for me. They're just so flimsy that I just don't feel any durability in them whatsoever. I don't think I'm going to get 25 years out of them. And I would like to put in some lights in there that are 25 years. So next time around, I'll put in something maybe that's premium. And uh, But for now, I'm just doing these can lights just to get by. And I'm going to put one right over the shower and, you know, so I can have a well-lit uh, Connex. So this is Steve, a thousand year home. Like, subscribe, follow me along. Uh, I'm still debating running conduit up there instead of Romex, but I think if I needed to pull new Romex, I could hook it to the old Romex and pull it through, and maybe I'll do that. All right, bye.